Turn on game room. Turned on light. Turn off game room. Turned off light. As you saw from the intro, I was able to actually control my home assistant entities using my VOIP phone. There's a lot of talk about local control, local assist pipelines and home assistant lately. So let me just talk about that for a minute. The assist pipelines are made up of various components. They, all of those components form a voice assistant. So you have different options for different voice assistants. The speech to text option is Whisper. It's an open source AI model, supports all kinds of languages. They use a forked version called Faster Whisperer. Now on a Raspberry Pi 4, processing the voice takes about eight seconds. On an Intel NUC, it is done in under a second. So the hardware matters here. For text-to-speech, we've developed Piper. Piper is a fast local neural text-to-speech system. Uh, it's optimized for the Raspberry Pi 4, and it also supports many languages. Using the medium quality models on a Raspberry Pi 4, it can generate 1.6 seconds of voice in one second. So it's very well optimized for doing that. So there are ways to do this. Let me just take you through installing the actual voice assist pipeline on my home assistant yellow here. So you're gonna to go to the add-on store and you're gonna search for, first of all, Whisper, speech to text device here or speech to text add-on and you're going to install it. I've already got it installed and running. And then you wanna install Piper. Again, Piper is the speech or text to speech. That's what talks to you. Whisper is what listens to you. So we're gonna install both of those. Now this isn't required to do what I did with the phone, but I just wanna take you through some of the options that are now currently being used in Home Assistant. And once you have it installed, you just click on start and it'll start up. Now, if you've never installed this stuff before, the integration that goes between these two is called Whisper, uh, or is called a Wyoming. So when you install these, you should see that your home assistant instance has discovered both Piper and, and Whisper, and it used the Wyoming protocol. In simple terms, the Wyoming protocol is the glue that takes all of these different pieces and puts them together in, into home assistant. So let's go over to integrations now, and let's look and see what it's found. So it's discovered Piper. So I'm gonna click on configure and there's nothing to do other than to auto configure Home Assistant using the Wyoming service. So let's submit that. And it's now created a configuration for Piper. And it should also discover Whisper. So I'm gonna go over, I don't see Whisper here in my list. Let me just make sure I'm not missing it. Let me go over to the add-on store again and make sure that Whisper is running. I'm gonna go ahead and restart it, make sure it discovers it. I installed Whisper quite a while back, and so I don't know if it's not discovered it because it hasn't been restarted since I updated Home Assistant a few times. So we'll get it to restart. All right, so Whisper has been restarted. Let me just see if it finds it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for these integrations to be discovered by Home Assistant. So we'll just let that happen for a little bit. And rest assured, it does work. I did it on my production, so it works just fine. All right, so that's how you would install it. And then you have actually two entities under here. And okay, never mind, it's already here. Faster Whisper and Piper are both here already. So even does does even though it doesn't show up here in the integration for some reason, it is part of the Wyoming protocol and is being used by Home Assistant. So Faster Whisper again is their their optimized version, and then Piper is their text to speech. All right, so you have those in there. Now what do you do with them? Let me go back over to my production Home Assistant instance here. All right, so I've got two here. I've got Home Assistant Cloud, and this is the preferred one. You can tell by the star here. And then I have Local Voice. Local Voice is where you can use your version uh, or your, your choice of, of speech to text and text to speech. You can also use um, different languages as well. So I have Faster Whisper as my speech to text, and I have Piper as my uh, text to speech and I have English set up for both of those and then the voices um, you can set different voices so for Piper I've got us uh, lessec low now if you want to change that you need to go over to the add-on itself and go to Piper and you can go to configuration and choose which one of these voices you want to use and there's all kinds of different languages here in all the different compression levels so you have low, medium, and high. 
So if you choose low, it's a very small uh, file size and all of that's in the documentation here. So if you look at this, the, the Piper voice to use such as low, the default uh, are all available. And all of this talks about um, documentation and sizes and everything else. The voices quality comes in four different levels, low, extra low, medium, and high. 16 kilohertz is the smallest and fastest. 16 kilohertz is fast. So the default is actually low and that's the fastest one. You can speed it up uh, by using medium and high or make it better sounding, but slow it down by making using medium or high. And so on a Raspberry Pi 4, up to the medium models will run with usable speed. If you get any higher than that, it will be uh, slow and probably not so usable. So just keep that in mind. You can leave everything for default or leave everything as default to start with and just play around with it and see what it sounds like and then change it uh, as needed. Now all of that's set up. We'll do a demonstration here in a few minutes. I do want to go back over to um, the voice real quick and just show you one thing. Uh, I'm currently set to use um, the Home Assistant Cloud uh, under my voice assistants. And so let me take you through how I set up the phone. Now I'm, I'm going to do this in a little bit different way. So the phone I'm using is a, a flying voice, a VOIP phone. It's got multiple lines on it. It's connected to my PBX, uh, which is free PBX. It's connected to a couple of my all-star nodes, which is ham radio stuff. Uh, and then of course it's connected to a uh, home assistant, my howl button here. Turn on the guest lamp. Turn off the guest lamp. And like you saw in the intro, it's basically the same thing there. So you can do um, you can do that with the phone, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Uh, it's very specific to the phone that you're using because not all phones uh, have exactly the same settings. So I'll show you the setting in the phone itself that I set up, and this hopefully will help you kind of understand some of the settings. If you want to do this with a VoIP phone, I don't know how many of y'all have a VoIP phone sitting on your desk, but uh, even if you're not using it with a PBX and it's just laying around, it's possible for you to do something there as well. So let me take you to the phone configuration. There's only one area that you're really concerned with on this particular phone. So if we look at the phone here, we have uh, line one is what I'm using for that. And this is an eight line phone. Uh, so line enable and the registration failed is fine. Home Assistant doesn't have any concept of registration, so it's going to fail. The line has to be enabled on the phone in order to do what I want it to do here. So that's why it's enabled. I gave it a name, Hal, H-A, Home Assistant, L, I don't know, Hal, just sounded good. None of this stuff matters here. What does matter is the proxy server. This is the IP address of your Home Assistant server. And this is the proxy port you've set up. Now you can change the voice assistant setting on Home Assistant if you want to. I left it as default of 5060. All the rest of this is fine. Make sure your audio codec uh, supports Opus. You have to be able to support Opus for it to work well. All these other ones are on here, but I'm just going to leave it as Opus as the very first one. And then the only other thing in, in this particular phone that matters is called the hotline. Now you can pick up the phone. If you leave the hotline blank, you can pick up the phone. You can push the button or push a button, just a number, it doesn't really matter. And then it force dials it out to the, to the home assistant by IP. And if you don't, or if you do put something in the hotline, it really doesn't matter. And I just put a single digit. It doesn't even matter what you put in here. Um, when you pick up the phone, because it's marked as hotline and there's something in the hotline field, it will automatically dial out to the IP address up here in home assistant and make it do its thing. So everything else down here doesn't really matter. One of the things I didn't test with here was um, allow, well, it's it's disabled. So I, I don't even allow IP calls. So really everything else here you can leave alone. You just set the hotline, you set the audio codec as Opus, and you put the proxy server as your home assistant instance and make sure the line is enabled. Again, now this is for the flying voice phone. When you come over to your home assistant instance, and you set up the VOIP, you'll get something that looks like this. You will see VOIP one device, and you can see that it's picked up my flying voice F1 or FIP14G. 
I didn't put that in there. It just knows. So somehow Home Assistant knows that's the device, which is really cool. And then it tells you uh, these things. Now, one of the things you need to do once you do that is you have to allow calls from that device. So if you don't, it won't do anything. And then you can choose your uh, assist pipeline. Now I have Home Assistant Cloud. Uh, and it's you can also select preferred, which remember in the other screen shows you the star on the preferred one. Or you can choose home uh, local voice. Now it's changed to local voice. And so we're going to try a little experiment here. We're going to see if this actually works faster or slower or otherwise. So let's go back over here to the phone and I've chosen the other one. Turn on guest lamp. This is in real time. Turn off guest lamp. Yeah, so we can see already that um, that there is some delay with that. Just using that particular uh, local voice, using the faster whisper and using Piper. Anyway, you go over here to voice assistance and you can look at this local voice and you can debug it. And this will, <laughs> and you didn't see any of that, did you? All right, so you go, you go into voice assistance and then you choose the voice assistant you wanna work with and you click on debug up here. And you can see what it found. It said, turn off gas limp. So if you actually do, which it didn't understand, but if you look at the one I ran before, um, let me run another one here. Turn off guest lamp. Now that was a lot faster and I'm thinking that it's because it's now cached. So, um, I'll try to refresh this now. Turn off guest lamp. So now it went from that exceedingly long, you can see in the past one here, it was 15 seconds. Turn off gas lamp. I didn't know what that meant. So the speech to text, that is, um, that is whisper, fast whisper took 15 seconds to try to figure it out and it didn't know what it was. The natural language processing was half a second. Uh, Text-to-speech was zero. And if we look at it now, it says turn off guest lamp. Speech-to-text with faster whisper was 4.3 seconds. The processing was 0 0.4 seconds. And you can see that Piper is super fast because it's designed to run on a Raspberry Pi 4. Now you might be wondering what I'm running. I am running the Home Assistant Blue, which is an Odroid N2 Plus. And I'm surprised that the speech to text with Faster Whisper is taking so long to run. Uh, if we go over to one more setting here in Home Assistant, I'll just show you um, the exposed part. This tells you all of the different assistants that are exposed or your entities, entities are exposed to. And this one is um, the Amazon one. This is your local voice control that we're talking about. This is the Google one. So you can see all of your different entities are exposed. And the one I just tried, oh, it thinks it is Living Room Lamp JS. So I said Living Room Lamp and it thinks it's Living Room Lamp JS. It's also not exposed. So if you wanna expose that to the home, to the voice assistant, you actually have to turn it on there and hopefully it knows what that is. So if I tried it again, maybe or maybe not work, turn on living room lamp and it says, and it says turned on switch. Okay, so there you go. Kind of a convoluted video today. Just wanted to kind of show you the possibilities for using, um, using this uh, as a, or using a VOIP phone as a, a hook into home assistance assist feature. 
There's lots more to come on that. I know they're working on it. It's one of the biggest things this year, of course, the year of the voice that they're working on. So I expect more things to happen. I need to play around with it some more to understand the speed of why my Odroid is um, slower. But using Home Assistant Cloud as a default, it is very fast and very uh, fun to play with. So you look here, my Home Assistant Cloud is the preferred. And again, just to show you how that works, if you go over to your VOIP settings, you can choose the assist pipeline you wanna use. And I'll just use the cloud for now. And that way it's super fast. Let me do that. Turn off living room lamp. And it's done already. So it's super fast uh, using the Home Assistant Cloud. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Let me know uh, um, in the comments section there, of course. If you have any questions, you can also ask me on Discord or ask the other great people on my Discord channel. Lots of work again being done on Home Assistant in the voice arena. So there's lots of content and lots of help out there on it. All right. Once again, thank you for watching and we will see you on the next video.